Hi everyone, welcome to another Zuko X Reader. So this is chapter 12. So I know my voice sounds a little cracky right now because I just woke up. So let's start reading. Caution and they on. It may make you tired. But let's get a yawn out. Alright. How was the boys' night? You asked Zuko while poking his cheek. He roguely looked up at you, then flashed a small smile. It was okay. I really did go all night. His head looked like it was going to fall into his food any second. My throat's starting to tickle. Hey, guys. You wanted to, you want to go home and sleep for a bit before heading out for work. Izuku simply nodded. While you were playing with his hair, which probably wasn't a good idea. That means silence. Moving on. <sighs> this was the first time you could peek into Izuku's apartment. I'm not saying that. Like, Izuku's a short little name. And you were more excited than you probably should have been. You expected there'd be all my merch everywhere, but it was rather plain looking. Well, not plain, but very simple. People really do grow up and mature, huh? You looked around, taking a closer look at almost everything. <laughs> it's pretty rough. I'm probably going on. Zuko threw himself into the couch. Onto the couch, so he could take a nap, but you stopped him before he fell completely asleep. Hey, wait. Your back is going to hurt if you sleep there. Let's go to your bed instead. You were exactly sure where his bedroom was, so you aimlessly followed him. Here comes another one. When you got to, when you got in, the first thing you saw was the bed. Of course, it was big, biggest thing in there. It was very neatly made and had black covers. You walked over next to. You. Next to Zuko, who was chilly and ready to fall asleep on his bed. You were waiting until he finally did so you could tuck him in. Plans were unfortunately stopped when Zuko hugged you and dragged you onto the bed with him. Uh, agree? I need to go get ready for my hero work. No answer from him. That starts sooner than yours. Still no clear answer. Especially for a small grow. <laughs> he must have been really tired. tried wiggling it out of his grasp, but it was useless. He had strong grip. He had a strong grip. I curse you, bear hugs. Finally, you gave in and just set aside to wait until he wakes up. Meanwhile, waiting, you focused on his face. You never really gotten a good look at his face. 
let alone his sleeping face since he tend to embarrass easily. His freckles were very uneven, placed, unevenly placed all over his face. You wondered if any of those body parts has freckles. Clearly, you lifted his shirt, bought the collar, checked his shoulders. They also had lots of freckles. Wow, that's really cute. You looked at his hair. It will start green color. It looks tangled, but touching, me, touching it made you realize it's not. It actually really fluffy and soft, like baby hair. The roots were black and made him look edgy, sort of. His eyelashes were actually pretty long and black. Dang, I'm jealous. He's prettier than me. <laughs> you started imaging all sorts of clothes he would look good in. Edgy clothes, soft clothes. It was really evident that he could pull any style off. You tried looking up at the clock. It was 12 p.m. Many more minutes until you had to go to work. A small pal appeared on your face. Work was so boring at times. It wasn't just about fighting villains and saving people. It was paperwork and lots of it. Izuko started Stirring into his sleep. You suddenly his grip on you, and you saw it was perfect opening opportunity to slip out or slip away. With lots of ease, you got out of his hug and slipped a pillow in your place. He didn't seem to notice, which made you breathe a sigh of relief. Got out of his living room and decided to make him lunch so that he had a good day. At work. After you finished what you needed to, you lifted a little note on top of his bento. What's a bento? Oh, I think it's like uh, a soup canteen? Let's search that up. Japanese food. <laughs> Wait. That, yeah, okay. So, we just searched it up. Good morning, Greenie. I made you bento. So you could take it to work. Why in? Alright, let me on. I know most of you, they're just me yawning in the middle. When you got to your hero agency, you were greeted with a lot of smiles. The atmosphere in your agency was always happy. You liked it that way. Miss Ellen, there's someone waiting for you in your office. For me, for me one of your secretaries. You nodded and said a smile, small thanks. When you headed to your office, you could completely contemplating who it could be. Could it be Mina? Or another citizen wanting us to investigate something? Opening the door, opening the door in your off to your office, off, blah, blah, blah. opening the door to your office revealed a long and slender frame. The white hair was enough for you to know who it is. Soup? You rushed up to him and hugged him. Yo, why in? He hugged you. What are you doing here? You're pro you prong? Want to team up for a mission? It's pretty last minute, though. Sure, anything to get me away from this paperwork. He pointed towards a sim seemingly grown pile of papers on your desk. Yeesh, sucks to suck, he teased. So here's the mission. We have to find any kinds of inc 
Frymancy with evidence against a small group of villains. Not too big, but we have to be careful. You nodded in agreement. Sounds easy enough. After getting ready and arrive at the elves meeting, people of the criminal, you were both waiting on a nearby rooftop, waiting to see anything illegal happening. Someone gave you a tip that news reporter were also going to be in the scene. This made the mission a harder, hundred times harder. Look right there. Sick pointed towards a man that in a hoodie waiting, walking towards a white van. The man knocked on the door of the van and it opened up to reveal two people there. The one in honey handed the others a wad of cash, and in turn, he got three hefty bags of drugs in them. Supposedly, so those are the legal quirk strangers. They have to be stealthy to make sure they're not caught, he whispered. You both waited until the van left so you could apprehended the man. You took notes of the license plate of the van for a later. After the van left, you both seemingly made your way down. Sook dropped in front of the man and used his work to blind him temporarily. That means it's not permanent. You got hold of the bag and put them in your portal. You noticed the man quickly reached into his pocket and took something in his arm. Shoot. I think he used a quirk exchanger, Sook said. Trying to act calm and composed, and with that, the fight had begun. The man had a mirrored quirk. He sent high pitches for shrills towards you. The noise made you cringe <laughs> and had you fall to your knees. Sunflower. Now would be a good time to help you try talking. Of course. He bowed over the villain and sent a beam towards his face. This seems to distract him a bit and gave you a chance to compose yourself again. You opened the portal behind him and pushed him in. Upon closing the portal, you opened another one that could fall flat on the floor and he knocked out. You wiped your forehead and gave some flower a high five. All right, that wasn't too bad. He congratulated. A bunch of news reporters and photographers came out and recorded your victory. Each of them asked a ton of questions. Sook looked down at you and winked. He came over to your face and whispered something that made you white in your eyes. His face came crushing into you as he kissed you. He pushed him away, not wanting to continue. With this selfish action, the paparazzi grew more restless. Are you a sunflower dating? When did this re relation start? How long have you two known each other? Within a second, though, you ran away from the spotlight, confused, angry, and annoyed. Wow. <laughs> so we <we've... laughs> So I'm guessing we can try and do chapter. Wait, which cap chapter were we on? Chapter four. We were on chapter. Maybe I can do the Halloween special. Yes. So I probably forget to read this on Halloween, but it is fall, so let's do the Halloween special. This world was cast in chaos. There was always a constant power struggle be between heroes and villains. And now with the villain's new secret leader, it was becoming extremely hard for heroes to overcome. 
The area you were assigned to surveillance was actually quiet. There was rarely any really dangerous or bad violence, and today was just another day of patrolling. Patrolling was nice. The city was always cool to walk around in, and the people were very nice and always greeted you. But today, patrolling had been cut off for a bit early because you found a mysterious dark figure lurking around an alley. You were following them, but they seemed to notice you and started running. It was awfully suspicious. You started running after them. But it was hard to keep up since they kept turning and weaving around the place. One morning they went inside a door. You burst the door open and started investigating the place. It looked like an abandoned bar. Nothing special. The person was nowhere to be found. You looked in every room of the bar, but there isn't anyone until you came back to the main room. Hey, sweetheart. A voice came from behind the bar. It's you. Why were you running? Do you ignore the fact that he caught you some parts? Because otherwise, he wouldn't chase. I would have still followed you. He said, keeping your guard up. Your eye of the man, up and down. He was wearing rather formal clothes. A vest with slacks and white shirt complete with a tie. He had piercingly green eyes. The dark green hair with black roots. You look, you like what you're seeing? He asked tauntingly. What's your business here? Ah, uh, I just came here to lurk, lure you. You know, I've been watching you for some time, and you really are a doll. He grinned like a psychopath. This guy is definitely off his rocker. Why have you been watching me? Because I've grown a particular liking to you. His words made you had make you made you cringe. Why is he trying so hard? And that's it. You have no alter movement. You saw him pull out a small shot glass and pour himself some alcohol. After he finished his glass, he looked at you with a half lidded eye. Eyes. Nope, at least not right now. For now, though, I plan on making you mine. He smiled miraculously. Well, sorry to say that, say, but I don't want to be yours. Ah, you see, I figured you say that. He started laughing. Man, manically. But sadly, for you, you don't have an option. Of course I do. I don't want to be so hard. I don't want to be. Let me read that again. Of course I do. I won't be so hard for me to take you down. Ah oh, yes, he like playing the hero. He hissed because that because of that I rigged different parts of the city to blow up. You face widens, you can't let that happen in any case. Your scared face is so cute. What do I have to do? You bluntly said. Easy, you have to suffer. You have to surrender to me for the night. He looked up at you with his head tightened, slighted. Surrender? How would I know you will defuse the bombs? I'll give you the switch that triggers it in the lane map of where they were, where they are, and how to defuse them. He pulled both items from behind the bar counter and set them in the on the table. So, do you agree? Before I agree, isn't this useless? Are they just going to get tired of me? A small smirk take the corner of his lips. Who knows? 
You're not like all the other girls who particularly beg me to please them. That sickens me. That sickening. He was just going to throw me away like a, his other dolls. But if that means if it means saving the city, then I have to at least try. Fine. His whole face brightened up. If he were a psycho, then maybe you would have thought he was cute. Perfect. You're finally mine. You felt like throwing up. Real risking, right? Bow risking in your throat. He walked over to you and pulled you against him with your waist. You put your hand on his chest and protest. And without any warning, he started kissing you. His lips first his lips first met when your forehead and kissed you lightly. Once his beginning was a little gentle. You couldn't handle the kiss, so you pulled him away. Come on, darling. You can't be pushing me away. He pulled out a hand handcuffs and put them on your waist, ensuring you that you wouldn't be able to push him away anymore. He pulled you close to him again and wrapped his hands around your neck, securely attaching a collar that could attach him attached with a chain. Just make sure you don't run away, he smirked. He continued kiss his kiss, but this time on your lips. I'm admitting he was a good kisser. His kisses felt very fascinated in the it made you melt inside. He slowly walked you over towards a couch up against the wall. He sat down and sat you down on his lap. You were no longer kissing, so the continue he used the chain to pull you closer to him. He began his flurry of kisses that made a knot in your stomach. His hand traveled up and down your chest and hips, making butterflies in your stomach appear. Before you knew it, you were being pushed down on the couch. His kisses became more aggressive, his teeth biting your lips. For entrance, you let him in and explore the inside of your mouth. He started to undress while ki still kissing. He passionately, since you couldn't undress, he was doing it for you. Are you really going to do this on that couch? He wondered, but soon your mind couldn't even think straight. You were just enjoying it at the moment, not resisting anymore. It had been weeks since your little get together with the man. Turns out he was the new leader of the villain, Zuki Midoriya. You haven't told anyone because, frankly, you were going to get in a big trouble, and you didn't want to hear all the nagging. You woke up feeling refreshed, refreshed and pretty. When you got to the bathroom, you looked in the mirror and noticed the skin was so nice and glowy. Sounds like pregnancy. <laughs> you suddenly had an in intense urge to throw up, so you got to the toilet and threw up what you ate last night. Ugh, I'm never going to look at Tokoyaki, teriyaki, same way again. When you were downstairs, you looked at your phone for symptoms of throwing up. Your eyes widened when you saw pregnancy. Did he use protection? Recalling what happened that night, did you realize you didn't? Flip or shoot. 
After coming back from buying three tests and using them, he waited for three minutes and those three minutes felt like a whole eternity. Your brain was overthinking everything, but the biggest question was, what the flip is going on? You checked each test after the time finished. They were all possible. Flip! Your sweat drops. <laughs> so... So... I'm guessing that's villain dick. So I hope you enjoyed... Chapter... Um... um Chapter 12 in the Halloween special. Bye-bye.